Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Amy Clark. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Illinois Legal Aid Online, also known as Aleo. Uh, I'm here with my colleague, Gwen Daniels. Uh, she's our Director of Product Development. Um, and today we're going to talk about how um, Aleo uses technology to close the access to justice gap. So um, Aleo was created in 2001, and the purpose was to connect people to free civil legal information uh, through our website, IllinoisLegalAid.org. Um, and you can see, you can't see it very well, but I have a couple of, or a few screenshots that show you the iteration of our website over time. So the first one, if you're interested, was um, built in front page. And the second one was uh, built in Cold Fusion, and then our current version of the website is um, built in Drupal. And I'm just I'm going to show you uh, the current site in just a minute. Um, but first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we mean by access to justice, uh, what the access to justice gap is, and how we use our site to bridge that gap. Um, okay, so access to justice is meaningful access to the courts or other systems of justice. So this means not just where people can walk into the courts, um, but that they also understand the court process, they understand their rights, and they know how to protect and enforce their rights. So people who can afford an attorney generally have meaningful access to the justice system because they have an attorney to represent them and to protect their rights. Uh, but when people cannot afford an attorney, they have to figure out how to navigate the complex court system and the complex, um, all the complex laws that we have, and they have to do that all on their own. Well, we, everyone got a chance to discuss um, what they, if they know what legal aid is. So just show of hands, I won't call on anybody. Um, do folks know what legal aid is? Okay, a few, that's good. Um, so generally, um, when people can't afford an attorney, they can get help through what's called legal aid. So that is free legal representation in civil matters for low-income people. So if people can't afford an attorney, they can apply to legal aid and get help with things like divorce, you know, anything that's not criminal. So divorce, um, so maybe collections, bankruptcy, um, child, like uh, custody, visitation, things like that. Um, but people are not guaranteed an attorney in civil cases like they are in criminal cases, which you all may be aware of. Okay, so what do we mean by the access to justice gap? So um, the problem with legal aid, it's great we have legal aid to protect people, but um, the problem is there are a limited number of attorneys to represent everyone who needs help. So um, that's what causes the gap. That's where the gap comes from. So for instance, in and around Chicago, we have about 300 full-time legal aid attorneys, but more than 700,000 low-income people who need, um, who need legal help every year. So that amounts to, in, in Cook County, that more than, it's a problem all over the state, but uh, our numbers for Cook County are that more than half of the people who actually qualify for legal aid because of their income, they have low income, um, they're turned away because there aren't enough attorneys to serve them. So their legal issues either go unresolved or they have to figure out a way to handle those legal issues all on their own. Um, and so that's where uh, Aleo comes in. So we use technology to simplify the law and provide free legal information. And we do that through our website, IllinoisLegalAid.org. And we um, provide information so people understand their legal rights, they know their uh, legal options, and they understand how to represent themselves in court when they can't afford attorney and they can't um, find a legal aid attorney. So we have uh, more than 1,700 uh, legal information resources, and those are available in multiple formats, articles, guides, which are um, bundles of articles, and I'll show you one of those in a second. Uh, we have videos and also court forms. Our site is um, free to anyone with internet access, but our target audience is low-income people. So we cover the areas of the law that they need the most help with. Um, so that could include uh, divorce, eviction, criminal expungement, immigration, and public benefits. I could go on forever, but um, that's just naming a few. Um, our site is device responsive, so it's uh, easily accessible on a mobile phone, and then and actually more than half of our users um, access the site on a mobile device, and that's one of the main reasons we moved to Drupal, is that right? Because um, our other site was not um, accessible on, on mobile devices, and so we knew that people were coming to us on mobile phones, it was impossible to read, so we knew we had to go to um, a different platform. 
We um, also provide uh, legal information in three languages, so English, Spanish, and now Polish. That's our most recent um, rollout, language rollout. And um, we write all of our information in plain language. So that means we avoid legal terminology as much as possible, so all those legal terms that nobody understands. Um, and we write everything at a 6th to an 8th grade reading level. Um, and so the, we know that obviously the law is very complex, uh, but we work really hard to make sure it's stated as plainly and simply as possible so that everyone can understand it. We do some marketing and we get referrals from our partners, legal aid, courthouses, libraries, etc. Um, but most people find us through Google. And uh, we have nearly uh, 63,000 people that use our website every week and our number of users has been steadily increasing over time. So uh, 1.6 million users in 2017, 2.3 million-ish in 2018, and this year, uh, just the first half of this year, we had 1.85 million um, users already. Um, so this is our Getting a Divorce Guide. Um, so the guide is, again, it's a bundle of information, it's a bundle of articles, and it's one of our most popular pieces of information on the site, and the, one of the reasons for that is that legal aid attorneys generally will not help people with divorces, and so um, a lot of people have to handle their own divorces, and we know that, so we have a lot of information to support them. Uh, so this shows how much of our legal information is structured. Um, we have this lead article, and um, it provides just an overview of information about divorce or any other, if we had another guide, it would um, provide an overview of that legal issue. Um, we include links um, to our other articles and guides on our website, um, just to cross-reference the information. So if we're referring to something else, we um, will link to it. Um, and then if we scroll all the way to bo the bottom, you can see where the guide part comes in, where the bundle of information is. Um, this is one of our longer articles. Uh, so we have, in these guides, we have a learn more section. So this is going to be where people will find answers to more specific questions that they have about the legal issue, in this case, divorce. So for instance, uh, what it costs to file a divorce, how do you divide property in a divorce, etc. And then we also have the take action section, and those are going to be um, very specific uh, steps that people can follow, um, in this case, um, in a divorce case. So it will tell them you know, how, maybe how to file a case, or if um, a case has been filed against them, how to respond. So, uh, you know, number one, gather your information. Number two, uh, fill out your forms. And so we do have a lot of court forms on the website. Many of them are what we call easy forms. So those are the, uh, the automated interviews. You know, they're like TurboTax. So they're guided interviews that people can follow um, to create their own court, court forms. It makes it a lot easier than trying to fill out their own uh, their own court forms, just you know, in a static form. Okay, so the recommended for you block is actually something something that we just did about six months ago, and actually we didn't do the work. Um, Civis Analytics um, built this for <coughs> us. They took a bunch of our um, Google Analytics data and created an algorithm for us that actually recommends um, content that that's kind of, that's related um, based on usage and event patterns out of Google Analytics data. Um, it runs as a Python script, and then I import the results into the website um, every six months or so. A and as an alternative to human tagged related content. And we just finished an evaluation of this block compared to our human picked um, related content. And this actually tested a little bit better in terms of um, driving in user engagement. So Amy showed the the steps for getting a divorce. And that's a, a, it's a static list of here's your steps. When we start thinking about what we wanted to do next, what we really want to do isn't just to provide users with, here's what the law says, here's the list of steps, good luck. But what we want to do is start moving towards a model where we're actually, where the website can actually coach a user through the process of getting a divorce or clearing their criminal record or um, dealing with an eviction. And so a few months ago, we launched what is kind of version one of this sort of approach. 
and it's uh, what we call it's called a ready to work portal. Um, it is a portal that is designed to help users remove specific barriers to being able to find or maintain employment. Um, for example, if you have a criminal record, that can be a barrier to getting a job. If you don't have a driver's license, that can be a barrier to getting to a job. Um, or if you don't have identification, a state ID or driver's license, you have no way of proving who you are and that you're eligible um, to work. And so our Ready to Work portal is just a, a, a page on our website um, that pulls together a bunch of different information around those specific groups of legal issues. And what we did was we sort of took some of those process, those how-to articles, and turned them into a, slight, a different format um, where instead of here's a whole list, instead we've given them a starting point, they can save their work, um, either anonymously with a return code, sort of like a, an airline confirmation number, or they can actually log into the, to a, create an account, log in, and then we'll keep track of it in a dashboard for them. But the idea was we give them some basic information, um, and we give them a checklist, uh, to, to walk through the, themselves through the process. Um, so if I need to get a state ID for the first time, there's a series of, of steps that I need to take. And we warn them before they get too deeply into the process, here's what you need to know before you get started because there's no point in going down the road of get, trying to get, say, an ID if you don't have your, state, your social security number or you don't have a birth certificate to prove who you are. You can't go, if you go down to the office to get a state ID, they're not going to give you one without the, the appropriate documentation. Um, and so a user can come in and they can learn, learn what they need to do, check off their progress, and then over time, because most legal processes are not as simple as getting a state ID, they often take months or weeks. Um, I don't know anyone who's been able to get a divorce in a day. Um, most divorces take months or years, depending on how complicated or how contested they are. Um, so the user can come back, pick up where they left off. We also have a tickler system behind this that allows, them, that allows us to set up automated reminders um, say somebody's trying to expunge their criminal record, one of the very first steps they have to do is they have to go and gather all of their police reports or records from all, of the, from all over the state if they've got multiple arrests in multiple counties. And so that's their first step. When they finish that, about 30 days later, if they haven't come back to the site, we'll send them an, e an email or a text message reminding them um, that they had started this process and if they had their documentation to come back and if they don't, um, it's a nudge to continue getting their documentation. We also try to pull in from other parts of, of the website, you know, commonly asked questions. If I need to get an ID, um, well, what if I've lost my social security card? If I click on that, that will tell me how to go about getting a replacement social security card. Um, we also pull in through our uh, Learn More blog down there related information for people who just want to learn a little bit more about what about the legal issue rather than just going through the, the steps. And um, as Amy mentioned, in, in almost every one of our legal processes, you've got to file something in court or you have to send somebody a letter. And so what we have done is we have integrated in our automated documents and data court forms. Um, we have Court, um, automated, automated court forms are easy forms for most of the big legal issues um, on our website. And if you want to know more about that, you can ask Natanya, who's in the second row. She um, writes them and manages um, developers who do them. And what they are, they're, as you said, they're, they're basically like TurboTax for legal forms. And they're free. Um, anybody can go onto our website, do an easy form, print it out, e-file it um, at no charge. And so we just made it so that the existing easy forms automatically integrate in with this platform. So as I said, this is version one. Um, my background is as a developer, so 
That's what it looks like it does, because I am not a designer. Um, we did have some design help, but we were also sort of limited into our existing um, templates. And so some of the challenges that we are, are looking at now, um, well, first of all, we're, we are just starting the process now of migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, um, which is our content management system. And hopefully that will allow us to expand this concept um, and do so across other channels, including Facebook Messenger, SMS, Voice, Alexa, that kind of, of thing, so that wherever our users are, we can reach them. Um, so some of the challenges that we're currently working on is figuring out how to um, best support nonlinear processes um, in a way that still allows our non-technical content managers to create and manage the content so I don't have to do it, um, or so none of my developers have to do it. And also figuring out how to better, ha better handle local information. Um, if you're in Chicago, for example, and you have a, a landlord-tenant te problem, and you're the tenant, you have a lot more rights because of the Chicago Residential Landlord-Tenant Ordinance than anybody else in the state. Um, and so being able to Im integrate information for Chicago users versus for downstate users within a, a single piece of content is, is something that we're still trying to address. Um, and as I said, we still have to make a lot of serious inter interface improvements to make everything um, flow easy, easier and be more visually appealing um, on mobile and desktop. Hi. Um, uh, I was just wondering, I know you mentioned there's way, way more cases than there are lawyers that can possibly take them on. And I, I was just curious what kind of determines which cases get picked by attorneys and which don't. So there's, there's, a, there's a handful, there's several factors that go into it. Um, one of them is your, in, your income level. Legal aid typically only helps, can only help people that are 125% of the federal poverty level or lower. Um, the other thing is a lot of the cases that legal aid takes are ones that impact basic health and safety. Um, domestic violence cases, um, home, things that that if they're not resolved, will result in homelessness or dangerous situations, um, housing conditions, some consumer issues, but, not a lot, but even then not a lot. And not a lot of, of family issues unless there's violence or there's children involved. And each organization that does legal aid has their own set of case priorities. Well, this is a non-technical question. Did you say you did bankruptcies as well? And we have bankruptcy information, so we don't, we don't uh, have clients, we don't see or represent um, any clients, but we do have bankruptcy information. The reason I ask is because there were, with these red light cameras, and they started to rectify the laws for red light cameras, there's a lot of people that are filing bankruptcy just to keep their driver's license, driver's licenses, and I was just wondering if you all did a lot of those cases. And also, if uh, what percentage of clients that you have will actually go to your website versus just walking, into, walking through your door? Do you all keep tabs on that? So we, um, so we just have legal information on the site. We don't actually ourselves represent um, any members of the public. And so we have information about who comes to our website, not personal information, but just what pages they're visiting um, and how many times. Um, but we do have more information about, so we also, which I didn't mention, we didn't talk about, but we also do have a way to connect um, the public to legal aid organizations. So um, we, you know, Again, there aren't enough attorneys to serve everyone, but we do want people to know that legal aid uh, organizations are available, and so we do have a way for people to apply through the site to connect them to one of our legal aid partners. So that's something we also do. Um, we also partner with Upself. Isn't, aren't they in bankruptcy? I think, yeah, we're in the process. In the process, it. okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so, right, and we're sort of following what is happening. Um, with the issue of people wanting to file bankruptcy for especially for the tickets we have different information about you know when to file bankruptcy when it's a good time when it's not a good time um, 
you know, we have a, one of our automated documents is to help people make the decision about bankruptcy. Um, so that's the information that we provide, but we're not actually um, directly representing anyone. Do you have any other information? Um, as she mentioned, we, we connect people through our website to Legal Aid, and in the last two years, we have referred um, about 50,000 people through our online triage and intake system to seven specific legal aid organizations. The users come onto our website, they um, get triaged based on the program's priorities, and some of the programs will only take bankruptcy cases when it's um, to get a driver's license back. And they come in, so they triage through our system, and then they get, fill out an online application, and we e-transfer it over, and then we've done about 50 to 55,000 of those in the last two years, and that keeps growing. I have a question. Um, you talked about um, some of the reasons for um, moving on to the next version of Drupal. Um, what made Drupal um, the right choice, or, or how did you sell Drupal? And then the um, second question is, um, what were some of the uh, insights that you derived from user testing. So the Drupal decision, um, as she showed you, the original version of the website was written in front page. Um, I did that many, many eons ago. Um, and then we went, before I, when I wasn't on the organization, we moved, the organization was, built its own content management system back in 2001, 2000, between 2001 and 2005 in Cold Fusion. When we got to the point in 2014 where we knew we wanted to redo the website, at that point it made no sense for us to build our own content management system because what didn't exist in 2001 were tools like Drupal and Joomla and um, WordPress. Part of the reason we went with Drupal is because there is a platform um, called DLaw it is an open source distribution of Drupal for legal aid websites. It's built by a company out in California called Urban Insight, and they have made that platform available to anybody. They also have a hosted version called Open Advocate um, that they host for various legal aid organizations. And so there are about 20 other states in um, the legal aid community that are using Drupal for their statewide website. So we got into both a great community in the Drupal community and also within the Drupal, within legal services community. Curious about what happens when you reference your materials in a court? Why not? What if, what if you reference your materials inside of a courtroom? Uh, that is an interesting question. Um, I don't know about, I don't know, that is my answer. Um, but I do know, as far as uh, people who are using our forms, we've gotten a lot of feedback uh, from judges and courthouse staff that they're really happy about the forms that people provide. Because if they try to fill out a court form on their own, just like a static form, try to fill it in, they skip things. They don't understand it because it's not always written in plain language. I mean, there's more of a movement now to write the court forms in plain language. but. Um, you know, often they're not, and so uh, we have gotten feedback that people, I mean, they're not, I think you're talking more about referencing maybe some legal information, but um, I do know that the forms that people use in our site um, uh, are looked upon favorably because they are filled out more completely uh, and more accurately. Does that help? Okay. <laughs> and they're not handwritten in crayon. Um, yeah. which people have, have filed those. Um, Amy also works very closely with a network of legal self-help centers, um, some of which are based in courthouses, um, where they have navigators who are trained to guide people to our website to help fill out forms and, and find legal information. We've also got two questions from the agenda. Um, so the first question is, uh, is most of the legal info on the site uh, specific to the state of Illinois? Um, or are parts of it useful in other parts of the United States? So, yes, most of our, our content is designed for um, users in Illinois. There are probably there are probably a few pieces on our website um, that have national app application. Um, one of our most popular pieces of content is an article called um, "What's the difference between dismiss with prejudice and and without prejudice?" Um, that's the answer to that question is is almost universal. And we get a lot of traffic on that site on that question from users who are outside of Illinois. 
Uh, and the other question is, uh, how do you know when information is missing from the website? Do you ever conduct user interviews for someone who has visited the website? We've done some user research. Um, I, I actually had a Vista this year who um, was doing user interviews, and um, she's wrapping up that report now. A lot of what we get is we get feedback. We have um, on the on all of our court form pages, we have a block that says, can't find the form you're looking for, and where they can submit, I couldn't find a form for this, and then we can use that to decide what to develop next. Um, we also work very closely with our legal aid or the legal aid organization, and they know the problems that their clients have. And so if there's stuff missing on our website, they tell us. And we get anecdotal feedback from people who come in. Um, we run a, a, Amy runs a live help um, platform on the website so that to help people find information on our website. So if somebody comes in, they can't find what they're looking for, they live chat with um, usually a law student operator. And if, if the, they keep finding that people are putting in, saying, I am looking for this and we don't have it, then we can use that to um, inform additional content priorities. Oh, and, and comments on um, legal content. Yeah, and in addition to the com comments the public can leave on the um, information pages, um, so Gwen mentioned our self-help center, so we uh, work pretty closely with uh, libraries and courthouses, and so there are a number of what we call navigators at those centers, and they will contact me if they say, you know, somebody's got this question, and, you know, we were looking at your website, and we can't find the answer, but it seems like it should be there, um, and so we will work to try to um, answer those questions in the content in the best way we can. All right, so then uh, let's all give a round of applause.